There are three types of gamblers. First are the ones who spend maybe a fiver, a tenner, twenty pound max for a single session. After that, no more. Second are the ones who play professionally, which is probably the boom equivalent of millennials playing video games for a living, only the gamblers earn a lot more. Thirdly are the ones who are addicted to gambling, and their addiction gets them into serious trouble, which is something we see throughout Kaiji. Our main character, Kaiji Ito, can described as poor, lazy and exploited. If he's not working odd jobs to pay off whatever loan he's probably collecting like a weird offshoot of a Pokemon game, he's at home, gambling with his neighbours. Although Kaiji losing to them is a common occurrence, and so he de-stresses by vandalising expensive cars. After meeting Yuji Endo, he realises that Kohai took out a loan and had Kaiji sign it as the guarantor of the debt, only for the Kohai to go AWOL and leave Kaiji for debt of 3.85 million yen. But don't worry, the nice man who is connected with the Yakuza and isn't mad that Kaiji punctured his car tyres earlier, decided to give him a way out, a trip to the Espire. The Espire is a Teya Corporation owned ship, which is a total no Yakuza business Endo is a part of. Debtors bought the ship as a way to clear off the debt, however some are repeaters who have found a way to profit off the ship by manipulating the newcomers. Here's where we see Kaiji's first experience at this manipulation through a game of restricted rock paper scissors. Restricted RPS goes like this. Each debtor must borrow between 1 million and 10 million yen as a loan. This loan is compounded at an interest rate of 1.5% for every 10 minutes, maximised at 140% for the 4 hour long journey on the Espire. Any excess money left over after the debt is paid off will go back to the debtor as some sort of profit. After receiving the loan at the start of the game, each debtor also gets 3 stars. When a debtor wins against another one, they, could, they take a star off the loser and add it to their own. Think of it as the HP of each person playing the game. The game itself is just a card version of rock paper scissors. You get 4 rock cards, 4 paper cards and 4 scissor cards. The standard rules apply. To survive, debtors, debtors need to keep at least 3 of the stars and lose all 12 of their cards and cards cannot be thrown away or destroyed otherwise they will be disqualified. If, they are, if a debtor survives and has at more than 3 stars, they can go upstairs to the lounge area where Teya will buy off these extra stars for a small profit. However, if a debtor loses all 3 of the stars at any point of the game, they will immediately get nicked, no questions asked. If a debtor has at least 1 star at the end of the game, they can buy off any extra stars from another debtor in order to survive. However, if a debtor also has 3 stars and survives to the end of the game, they can buy out another person who lost all 3 stars at any point of the game. Now going back to Kaiji, after being tricked by Joji Furnai into losing 2 of his stars, Kaiji forms a ragtag team with Mamoru Ando and, Kat and Takeshi Fulahata, who was the guy who got Kaiji to sign the debt as a guarantor and basically rope him into this rabbit hole of illegal gambling. After a few ups and downs, the team wins a handful of stars and Kaiji sacrifices himself to let Ando and Furla have to survive and, pay and have enough money to pay off their debt, whilst also having enough stars to bail Kaiji out at the end of the game. However, Ando pulls a fast one and tries to sell all the extra stars they got, all while convincing Furla have to do the same. In the end, Kaiji is freed by forcing another group to bail him out, takes the stars from Ando and Furla have and bails out Koji Ishida, a guy he bonded with a short time in solitary. Once the Espire docks, Kaiji has his debt repaid off by the Terra Corporation, but now possesses another debt of 6.295 million yen from taking out a loan of 10 million yen at the start of the game and having a 140% interest rate. Four months after the events on the Espire, Kaiji is back to working minimum wage jobs, only for a bigger loan than he had before, though this doesn't go well for him as he leaves his job after being accused of stealing, along with his co-worker Makoto Sahala. Fast forward a few minutes and we see Endo confronting Kaiji again about his newly acquired debt and offers him another gamble. Throughout this episode, Sahara has been hovering Kaiji and was impressed by his deduction skills and his shady background. After spectating the meeting between Kaiji and Endo, he becomes interested in his gamble to get his big shot at life. Deciding that the reward outweighs the risk of whatever event Mr. Shady Yakuza Man gave him, Kaiji heads to the Starside Hotel where he sees some familiar faces, other S5 victims, Sahara and Ishida and all partake in the next event, Human Derby. The Human Derby is a simple and sadistic event, cross from point A to point B without touching a pole you're walking on. If you fall, you break your legs, or arm, or another bone you probably didn't know exist, and you can push people off if you like to. There's not much else to say in this one, kind of self-explanatory. If you somehow make it to the end, you get 20 million yen or 10 million yen for coming first or second respectively. However, it's only a ticket that has an expiry date and you need to complete another derby the electrical current steel frame derby. The same rules apply, get from point A to point B by touching the pole you're, pole you're walking on. However, instead of being disqualified and breaking your bones when you do touch the pole, you get an electric shock instead and fall 22 stories to your death.
After witnessing the death of every participant and being given issued a 10 million yen ticket to help pay off his debt to his wife, Kaijin makes to the end for a fair and just escape that can be easily spotted by everyone and is not in any way, shape or form cheating. What is cheating is that during the Steel Frame Custom Derby, Kaiji asked for the power to be cut off, which basically forfeited his rights to winning. Only the power was not cut off for a few minutes after Kaiji's request and led to the death of a few participants. More so, the ticket became null and void after the forfeit, so everyone kind of just died for nothing. Now, the Terra Corporation aren't that heartless. Sure, they may have let some people suffer and die for the ent entertainment of the upper class society, who for some reason enjoy all this stuff. But after unfairly taking Kaiji's winning, they decide to give him another chance through a, a different game, E-Card. E-Card is another psychological card game, and the premise is simple. There are three cards, the Emperor, the Citizen and the Slave. The Emperor is the most powerful and can beat the, the Citizens. The Citizens have freedom and can beat the Slaves, however two Citizens played against each other will always equal the draw. The Slave is a mad lad and can beat the Emperor because he has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Each player will always start with 4 citizen cards and either a slave card or an emperor card depending on what side they're playing on. To win, you just need to play the better card, however if you win as a slave then you will get 5 times the payout than what you originally betted. Each game of the e-card will always have 12 rounds and every 3 rounds you will swap sides, so you do 3 rounds of emperor, 3 rounds of slave, 3 rounds of emperor again and 3 rounds of slaves again. Now, this wouldn't be a kaiji episode if kaiji wasn't in a life threatening situation, so to make money kaiji must struck a weird drill prison thing to his ear and will win 100,000 uh, yen per millimeter of kaiji bets to a maximum of 30 millimeters where his ear drum will be pierced and he will come deaf. Also the ear prison thing measures a bunch of like kaiji's body information such as blood pressure which is used by Tonogawa to cheat but kaiji solved the problem through brute force, brute force which was used to cut his ear off. After a couple of games cutting his ear off sacrificing his other ear kaiji wins a 20 million yen payout instead and Shiodo forces Tonogawa to apologise through a heated doggism mat. A very hot doggism mat which he passes out on and is fired from soon after, as his position of the second in command of Teiai. But for some reason, Kaiji isn't satisfied with this and goes back to challenge Shiodo to another gamble. Kaiji's 200 IQ idea to win more money against the man who runs a criminal organisation, known for sponsoring major gambling events involving people who have to pay off the debt to long sharkers who work for that same organisation and probably has a few years of gambling experience himself, is through a raffle. That's it, there's nothing to it. He gets a tissue box, rips off a bunch of tissue with one of them having a circle drawn on it and creates a raffle. He even tries to cheat the system by having a winning raffle placed in the box prior to the raffle itself. And he was so confident in this raffle that he bet not just his 20 million yen he just won, but four of his fingers. Now I will admit, the payout sounded nice, 100 million yen, but again, he is facing the man who runs a criminal organisation based around loan sharking and illegal gambling. He is not going to win. And he doesn't. Shockingly. Through the power of God, anime and a bad doctor, Kaiji gets his fingers and hair reattached, as well as a new debt of 9.8 million yen. Just remember, he won 20 million yen from e-card, so he would have had enough money to pay off his initial debt, give some money to Ishida's wife, and have some spending money left over. After a small walk around through Tokyo, Kaiji finds his favourite Yakuza long shark guy Endo, who in turn was looking for him, because Kaiji's debt has not been paid off yet and keeps on delaying payment. Endo, having done all Kaiji's bullshit, decides to claw from Kaiji and send him to the goal like Bat mentioned back in the Aspire. The prison camp itself is filled with people who failed to pay off their debt and now work really man labour to do so. In order to free themselves, they get paid in Pelica, which have a value of one, in, one tenth of a yen, so all the prisoners are just stuck here forever. Though they can spend 50,000 Pelica for a one day outside pass, as well as pay to have access to food and drink from the outside world. Overall, the idea of this prison is to get prisoners to spend all of their Pelica on other stuff to prevent them from paying the debt, essentially creating an infinite loop of free labour. Another way these prisons are kept here is through a monthly gamble of underground chinchulo. Now I won't explain the full rules here because it follows the same rule as regular chinchulo or silo according to Wikipedia. The show does explain the rules but there are some few exceptions. First is that the dealer rotation goes clockwise rather than counterclockwise. Second is that each player may opt to pass the turn as a dealer however if you do uh, decide to deal you must deal twice consecutively. And thirdly, there is no automatic win for the dealer, so each player can try to match what the dealer has in order to get an equal payout. After having a taste of chinchula, as well as going to 20,000 Pelica debt, 
Kaiji plans to take down the creator of the game, Oski, along with a group of people who were fucked over by Oski as well, dubbed the 45ers, because they had to pay off the debt through their paycheck and were given 45,000 Pelica rather than the usual 1,000 Pelica on a payday. After 85 days of sailing at Pelica, the 45ers rechallenged Oski to a no limit chinchilla, and after testing the waters, the 45ers bet 501,000 Pelica, where we figure out how Oski has been winning through a 4 5 6 dice. Simply put, rolling a 4 5 6 is an, is an instant win, and the dice Oski uses has a 4, 5, and 6 on each side of the dice. Also, the side Ben Phil are using a 4 5 6 is that the lowest throw Oski can get is a 4, which is still quite strong. However, this honeypot completely baits out Oski, and the 45 is expose him and his 4 5 6 dice to the crowd that has been created from this high risk chinchilla. However, instead of calling it, Kaiji had a better idea and a better dice, a triple snake eye. You see, these dices are important because it gives the winner a 5 times payout and completely beats the 4 5 6 throw. Pair that with Oski having to deal twice, and the 45 is completely wipe out Oski for 18 million Pelica payout or 1.8 million yen. Split that up with everyone in the 45 is and that's a 3 million Pelica payout. Or it would have been. Here we are, nearing the end of Kaiji's journey. When in the gulag against Oski, Kaiji has two goals paying off his debt and making enough money to free the 45ers and pay off their debts because the 45ers decide to give Kaiju all of their money. With twin days of freedom and 1.8 million in his pocket, he goes to the one place he knows he can make money, shady illegal casinos powered by the Teai Corporation. This time he chooses the most secure way of gambling, a gamble where he's completely in control and the odds are completely in his favour, Pachinko. Kaiju was first introduced to the casino and the pachinko machine by his new ally Kotaro Sakazaki who wanted Kaiji's help to win back his wife and daughter through winning the jackpot. The machine, with a jackpot of 550 million yen dubbed as the bulk, is no ordinary machine, especially with the crazy minds behind its development. It has pins that have three different patterns and tightnesses, brass balls to prevent cheaters from using magnets, a sensor above the flippers that detect the balls and perfectly times it so that it flicks the balls away, a highly pressurised wall of air that prevents the balls from going into the jackpot hole, and the ability to tilt the trays, the machine itself and the fucking floor that the machine is on to prevent the balls from going in the hole. Basically, you have two ways of winning, either being allowed to win by the house, which a certain two, which certain two members of Tei have done, or by cheating. Now, because of how complex the bog is, Kaiji and Sakazaki had to attempt had to attempt this multiple times, so I'll try my best to summarise all the attempts. The first attempt was simple to do and simple to defeat. Put a magnet at the bottom of a beer can and try to manipulate the balls. Doesn't work because the balls are brass, but hey, good attempt. Also, the inside man Sakazaki used to gain this information was a rat and activated the blockers without Sakazaki knowing. The second attempt is to use Endo into the mix, who was at risk of going to the Gorlark himself for not collecting the debts he has. After getting another loan from Endo to be used to cheat against the bog, Sakazaki decided to go play the bog one more time, only to get pissed and pull out a dynamite stick. However, the dynamite stick was a fake and was used to distract the staff or while Kaiji went into the manager's office to do nothing. The third attempt was Kaiji's last, as this was his last day before going back to the Gorlark. And what was the ingenious plan to win? Just play the bog. After a couple of goals, Kaiji is expected by Seiya Ichijo, the casino's manager and the lucky, and lucky for Tei for using smaller balls. However, this gets disputed by Ichijo himself. We find out that Kaiji is slowly tampered with the tools used to maintain the machine and is now set at the A configuration rather than the C configuration. Once this is discovered, the blockers get activated and a spinner on the side used to previously bypass these blockers are now tightened. Also, for one reason or another, Kaji's efforts are now being broadcasted to the 45ers, the rest of the Gorlog, and Shoda himself. After a couple million yen drain into the machine, we see that the flippers are now broken because after, Saki, after Sakazaki broke the machine on his second attempt, the flippers were replaced with ones made by sugar and had a spike ball and a hand more pack, pack it inside. The air release melted the sugar and the flippers became permanently open. Now that the pins and the flippers are defeated, the last thing are the trays. At this point, the floor, bog and building are tilted to prevent the balls from going in. Paired that with a slight hump near the edge of the winning hole to angle the balls away, it seemed impossible to get a ball into the winning hole. Kaiji's solution? Counter tilt the whole fucking building through the use of 20 ton water cubes that were pre-placed in an empty building above the casino. However, whilst playing the bog, Kaiji runs out of money and decides to take out his final loan from Endo. Now, the move to building of a fuck ton of water strats starts to bite Kaiji in the arse. The idea Kaiji was going for was to block all of the shoots at the trace, preventing the ball from going down and forcing the balls to go into the correct hole. 
However, the weight is distributed to the left side of the building and the floor, bog and building itself starts to tilt the other way, which is slowly emptying the losing chutes. But the chutes on the final hole are completely blocked up because of two balls jamming the chute, meaning that the balls on the last plate cannot go down any other hole apart from the winning one. Until each draw finds his little sheet device and activates the wall of air around the winning hole, pairs it up with Kaiju losing all of his money, and it's game over. Until Sakazaki comes in clutch, sets some motivation or stuff, and Kaiju forces the balls into the winning hole. After that, it becomes pure euphoria for Kaiji. The bog opens up, and Kaiji keeps winning over and over again. His total winnings: 720 million 100,000 yen, and each draw he goes straight to the goal up. Now out of the 720 million yen, some of it gets given to the casino girls who are watching Kaiji throughout this event. Bear in mind that this jack shit to help Kaiji at all. 9.24 million yen gets repaid back to Teai for Kaiji's debt. Kaiji pays Endo and Sakazaki for any loans he's taken out from them and any money he's took from them to play the bog. Endo is paid 113,260,000 yen for the loan and the setup costs as well as the interest rates. And any left over cash gets split up freeway for a total of 189 million. 370,000 yen for each person. However, not everyone is paid yet. The last loan Kaiji took out had an interest rate of 30% per every 10 minutes, meaning Kaiji had to pay Endo 127,850,000 yen back. After that, Endo is never seen again. At the end of it all, Kaiji uses most of his money to free the rest of the 45ers, as well as the son of Ichido who he met back in the gulag. The downside is that the rest of the money is lost due to Kaiji becoming a pachinko addict. But just to show that Teai Corporation isn't as heartless as it seems, the Men in Black, which is their official name, gives Kaiji 30,000 yen to spend with the 45ers and Ishida Jr. as he was too embarrassed to meet them after losing all of the money. We end this series on Kaiji, the 45ers and Ishida Jr. at a pub, celebrating. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the distinct art style this series has. When I first watched the series, I found the art style very jarring, from like the very sharp draw lines and uh, Kaiji and Sahara had to like the to like the very round faces Endo and Shoda had, paired that with like the very distinct uh, no shapes and sizes, it really looks off-putting, especially coming from like it should come from like another anime series where the art style like show some sort of resemblance of the human genome, unless you watch something like JoJo, in which case you know you probably get used to it quite quickly. Now I think because of like this uniqueness to design, it makes like the characters from Kaiji like a lot more recognizable. Like to me, most anime characters, like the, the design of each anime character, it doesn't really like differ from one another, especially with like genres from like Slice of Life. Maybe you have like a different hair color, maybe like you know, maybe you have slanted eyes or rounded eyes, but more or less, it is kind of like it has like a format, and you know, most shows stick to that format of character design. But in Kaiji, this pretty like sharp design paired with like the very animated facial expressions, uh, like each character gives, it gives Kaiji like a sense of identity as an anime. Like I can look at something from Ka I can look at a character from Kaiji and be like, I know exactly this character's from Kaiji. But if I look at something from like another like a random slice of life show, I wouldn't be able to like differentiate from like one show from another. And moreover, Madhouse did the animation for Kaiji, which probably helped a lot more. Like for me, if some like less and less known studio like animated this, I probably would have talked it up to them to, like trying to find like their footing in the anime industry. Like they're trying to decide like what type of what type of like anime anime style they're trying to go for, like all the you know, basic like character design and stuff like that. But with Madhouse's vast experience from animating different like different shows such as Death Note, No Game No Life, and the Tatami Galaxy, which if you haven't watched, if you haven't watched, has like a very unique art style and like animation style, and personally, it's like one of my favorites. I think because of like that vast experience they have, they were able to pull off like this unique art style without making it feel, for lack of a better term, second rate and like strange. And next are the characters. First of all, the most important character, the one that carried the show, the one that in my opinion would have broken the show should his mere existence was removed, the narrator. Now, I have a, a lot of appreciation for the, narr for the narrator being used. First, he's used to recap from the previous episodes, which if you like to binge watch animes, it would probably get annoying after like, the fourth or fifth episode. But for people who like to watch multiple episodes, like multiple shows at once, or people like me who have like a very, like, who have, like, a really shit memory, it's like a nice touch from Madhouse or whoever decided to add a narrator to include something like this. The second is that he's used to explain any information related to like what's going on in the episode without breaking like the episodes like the show's flow or breaking the characters like character I guess. 
What I mean by that is like he's used to help fill the gaps of knowledge and make sense of whatever convoluted plot the writer is cooking up. Personally, I believe that this is shown well during the e-card gamble. Both Kaiji and Tonagawa had passed out the gamble where they had to explain like what they were thinking, what they were feeling. The narrator just existed to help fill any gaps that the characters did not like explain well through their thought process, as well as fill in like fill up what would have been like dead air with information or description of what's going on, how the characters feeling, stuff like that. The way I see it is like the narrator is kind of like uh, the viewer, slowly learning and piecing information to gain to have like plot points and events linked together nicely without breaking the character's character, without breaking up the show's flow, stuff like that. Now going from a disembodied voice to one river body, Kaiji's character was almost perfect. His bored nihilistic personality at the start of the show, paired that with his habit of vandalizing as a form of like the stress relief, easily shows how much of like a low tier person he is when compared to like the average person. Paired that with his habit of gambling and like the debts he constantly has, and you have, uh, to me, you have like a really great underdog for the rest of the series. Then being against people who take advantage of him, or is just some way, shape, or form like sleazy or scummy as well as teaming up with those who are in like the same situation as him it just makes like it just makes me want to like root for him even more like every time i watched him like go against someone from the te like from tai like i genuinely wanted him to like win to come out on top pair that with his like very expressive facial expressions from like the teeth showing grin he has to like the niagara fall like tears he produces when he gets like frustrated or upset to like the cocky smirk he does when he knows he's about to outsmart someone or just the face he makes when he has that pure anger when he's when he's gambling in like a unfair situation like he be, every time i see him on screen he becomes like a gem of a character like again his facial expression just makes makes his character up that's all that's all i can say that like when he, when you see his facial expressions when you see like how he reacts to situations he, he he becomes just such a gem of a character to watch on screen and the supporting characters have some caliber to them as well and though being a loan shark, he will create absurd interest rates and will hunt people down to get his money back. Even after Kaiji won the bug and helped him avoid the gulag, Tonagawa being such a cocky person because of being in second command of Tai, only, only to be beaten by Kaiji and forced to apologize on a heated dog as a man. And then Hyodo being that wise leader of a criminal organization who respects Kaiji as a gambler but hates it when he went through like the power of luck or some like unentertaining way. Even the characters that turn up for like one arc, like for Nai or Osuki, they all feel like some, they all feel entertaining. And w not once did I like, when I watched the show, not once did I feel like they made the episode, like for like the show itself just drag on. They all had their own like uniqueness to them and that uniqueness just made each arc as entertaining as each other. My main issue with Kaiji's character is that he, He's irrational at some points, especially during that raffle lottery gamble thing. Like, first of all, the raffle, the raffle itself is very RNG. Even if you cheat the system, like, so why would you, why would you sacrifice everything for a lottery when you like want something where you have like where you have like, a good chance of like, pushing the odds in your favor without cheating? Like, even if it's just like a fifty-one forty-nine to you or Kaiji in this case. And why the boss of Tei? Like I understand Kaiji like wants to have like some like karmic justice, but he gambled all of his winnings and four of his fingers. Yeah, he wanted to avenge his friend. Like he wanted to you know avenge avenge his friends, and he was also like thinking on his feet for a new gamble to come up. But even so, like it still doesn't like the thought process wasn't there from what I can tell. He just it was just he just did it. There was nothing, there was nothing like that can be justified for his actions of making the gamble apart from karmic justice. Although him having like these character flaws, it makes it. It's like for me, it's it's better for him to have these kind of like weird flaws than him being some sort of like OP gambler who's like all neutral poker face stuff. Like it just makes the show like entertaining. It, you know, again, I'd rather watch an I'd rather watch the character who gets beaten down rather than some sort of like OP character who just wins every like battle he faces. The the last thing I want to talk about about Kaiji is like the overall show itself and why in my opinion it's better than other gambling shows. Now I'm gonna be comparing this to Kakaguli mainly because uh, after watching Kaiji I watched Kakaguli right after because I was I guess I was in like gambling anime high or whatever you want to call it. I just wanted to watch more gambling anime after watching Kaiji and Kakaguli was re was recommended to me right after. And another thing is that 
if there are other gambling and like, gambling shows that like match Kaiji's like caliber, let me know. Like, I again, I chose I chose Kakaguro in this case because it was just another popular gambling anime that I watched right after Kaiji. To me, gambling animes aren't like known, and if they are known, they're not really like they're not as they're not as popular as like other shows. And again, to me, I think like these gambling shows can be like a lot more popular than like other known animes in like other genres like isekai like isekai is like a good example for me because every season we get like two three like weird fucking offshoots of an isekai like thing it's gone to the point where like it's isekai just parodies itself now and like gambling animes haven't obviously gambling animes haven't gone to that point because they're not well known because they're not done out you know nine times out of ten just ignored to me i think these gambling shows should like get more recognition because there's a lot there's, there's a lot more ga- you can do a lot more with a gambling show than you can do with an isekai and to me because of that I think gambling again and gambling animes have a like they can be as popular as like isekais or other like sites of life something like that they just you know right now they're just kind of like ignored now the main thing that stood out to me between like the two series is that Kai had risk unlike the weird superficial risk Ka- uh, Kakagori presented now I'm not saying there's not like any risk in Kakaguri. It's it just that the risk weren't like deadly. Like most pets the student place were essentially like the lives and become house pets. Now becoming the school's punching bag slash sex toy is like a fate most students probably don't want. I'm just saying. But like in the world of Kak- in the world of Kakaguri, they can get out of this situation by either gambling as expected or by paying one million yen. And considering that this, like the in the world of Kakuguri, is set in a school for children from parents with like strong connection or like powerful influence, it should be like relatively easy just to like get out of being a house pet, unless you're from like some weird normal household. In which case, why are you here? Like, go 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 to a public school. There's a lot of, there's there's little risk in a public school in you know in Kakuguri. Like just go go to another school, please. Do yourself a favor. In Kaiji though, it's not that simple. Kaji can pay off his debts, like, you know, like normally, but that's before considering, like, the absurd interest rates he gets from Endo, and then, like, also being pursued by, uh, yeah, pursued by Endo, uh, to go to, like, the s to and the Sasa Hotel, where, you know, Endo makes it as, like, some easy, like, get rich, like, quick scheme type stuff, like, type stuff to Kaiji, like, you know, like, a, a fast way of just getting his debt prepaid off. But then, like, he, you know, Kaiji goes there, he gets fucking baited by Endo, by Tei into either getting more, like, there, or he just kind of just does something stupid and makes him lose all of his black like, winnings. From what I remember, like, Kai- Kakigurui doesn't have something like that. In, again, in Kakigurui, the main way you can just, the easy way you can get out of being a household pet is by paying 1 million yen. And, again, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the characters in K- Kakigurui, they're all from like wealthy households they're, you know they're, they're in like a private school their parents should have some sort of like connection of like connect- they should be connected to like oh you know other people who have power who have money getting one million yen might be difficult but like compared that to kaiji where they will literally get hunted down by tai corporation and then thrown into the gulag for not fucking paying their debt like kakuloi just like has like a this is like basically just has like a get out jail free card for most like most kids and then kaiji's just like no you're gonna have to fucking you have to fight your way through you know tai just to just get like five minutes of like freedom also it's not just like the overall risk that comes from gambling in each show even the risk of each like gambling like game is different between the series so for example in kakaguri there's a gamble called the finger cutting gu- guillotine which basically involves a student sticking their finger in like a small guillotine and basically it's like a game of chicken you just have to be the last person to like yank your finger out as like someone like cuts the good strings because above your finger is a massive fuck off blade which will cut your finger off obviously if you don't put that out in Kakaguri, uh what they don't tell you like throughout the gamble I, I think until the end is that there's like a thick metal plate that stops your like that stops the blade above the finger so your finger doesn't cut and get cut off which for the show makes sense because they don't I, I, I'm gonna assume no one really wants to watch teenagers have their fingers cut off unless you're into that or you're a psychopath something like that but like again like there's no like av- like 
to me like all the rest seem kind of like superficial like there's like a way of stopping like the rest again in the thing cutting guillotine there's that metal plate that stops the, the blade from cutting down in, the, in like the other camp where there's some sort of like okay we're not going to take it too far this is where we're going to start this is going to have to stop it it's just so just prevent from like bloodshed or whatever's going to go on then meanwhile you got kaiji where the risks are a lot real as in losing his fingers and one of his ears real which again makes sense for the show we're watching because again kaiji is set in like the world of like kaiji is more of like based around adults being gamblers rather than teenagers you know i guess I, I no one really wants to watch someone's finger get cut off or like ear get cut off but like between a teenager and an adult i think most people just accept an adult you know most people just rather have that happen to an adult rather than a teenager because kids in it also i was like writing this bit i was looking at the like other gambles in uh, kakagului and none like none of them seemed interesting to me like there's one involved like tarot cards and another being like an idol performance thing called active station like to me they didn't look very interesting or there wasn't like any risk and that went further than you lost x amount of chip or you became a house pet which is probably the worst one because they involve like physical mental and in some cases sex sexual abuse but between that and going to you know an underground prison where you're struck with your identity and you know being there for like 10 15 plus years only to die because you know your lungs are filled with carbon oxide or whatever like weird shit you're breathing in you know like again the risk of uh, based around for like the risk of for each show like or the risk for kaiji only work for kaiji because of the world that is set in I mean, like same thing with like why the risk of uh kakaguroi only work for kakaguroi because it's based around this you know sort of it's a world like it's a show based around teenagers that's why these risks like kind of work for their own shows but to me like i find the risk in uh not uh, i find the risk in kaiji a lot more interesting than in kakagoroi because in kaiji it's a lot more it, like it's like more effective like uh, kaiji is like a lot more effective at showing the like the risk of gambling to uh you know to the viewer than in kakagoroi the last thing i want to talk about is like how the anime approaches the gambling aspect more specifically i want to talk about like the the small speech sakazaki gave to uh, kaiji and ichijo so after losing all of his money to the bomb kaiji bets uh, the eight hundred thousand he has left over from the 40 vivers only to be rejected and humiliated by ichijo as well as not receiving any help from the crowd who was cheering him on just like prior to this however sakazaki comes in clutch and in the last minute brings two, two, uh, 20 million yen for kaiji to use now the show could have ended the scene could have ended there just kaiji gets the money and goes back to playing the ball however sakazaki starts to talk to both uh, ichijo and kaiji to ichijo uh, sakazaki berates them he berates the way he rejected kaiji's money the hope that kept him alive and how he stole all of the books winnings from the previous players their friends their families leaving them at the mercy of the Dei corporation was comparing the balls used to the tears and regret of regret and resentment of those who fell victim to this monster and its master to kaiji sakazaki wants him to avenge the victims people who had their lives ruined by the machine this whole bit kind of like cha changes kaiji's goal in winning the bog when casino arc started kaiji just wanted to beat the bog so he can free the 45ers as well as because sakazaki wanted, wanted his help to beat the bog for his own personal reasons but the more money and effort they put into beating the bog like the less personal their reasons got to the point where they just kind of like completely forgot about their reason like they, they completely forgot about the main goal until the end where they won the jackpot and to me i think this is where like as a gambling anime kaiji shines kaiji the anime it doesn't like try to hide the negative side of gambling it shows that darker side it doesn't hide like the long sharking the absurd gambling people have to go through and the bets they place the punishment they have to suffer through when they cannot pay off the debt it doesn't hide that like aspect of gambling through like bright lights flashing colors and like shiny plot armor i mean quite literally we see kaiji get chloroformed and taken to an underground labor camp because he couldn't pay off his debt after he got his fingers and ear cut off like it's not just and it's not just kaiji that goes through all of this stuff like other characters experience that as well throughout the show you see tonagawa after losing to eat like an e card had to suffer through like the heated dog as a map before being fired 
Ishida's son inherited his father's debt and was sent to the gulag because his father died trying to earn the money. Ichijo, the casino manager, he gets sent there as well for losing the kaiji. And then you have like Sahala and, Ichi and Ishida and other you know unknown people. They just die outright for not winning. Like the show doesn't hold back. If they want a character to suffer, then the character will suffer. If they want that character to die, that will, the character will die. Compare that to like Kakagurui where there's like plot armor and like not a lot of people suffering from losing on the same level as Kaiji. People suffer, yeah, like you know, suffer not like the, people become house pets. But we don't really see like how far that goes within the show. It's only like we just kind of like hear it throughout the show. Like we hear people becoming house pets. How like oh this happened to this person for being a house pet. This happened to that person for being a house pet. We don't actively see it on the screen. In Kaiji, we see it on screen. We see Kaiji lose fingers, lose his ear. He goes and you know watch people die, watch Kaiji get cruel formed. We all see, we see that like it's not like a threat. It's an actual thing that exists in Kaiji. Like the risk of losing, it's an actual thing. Also, the the show humanizes Kaiji in a sense. Like the first thing you see is that he loses like you know gambling against his neighbors. It sounds stupid, kind of like showing Kaiji lose, because obviously it's a gambling anime, you expect some losses. But like having like Kaiji lose gambles and then suffer because of like him losing, it kind of like humanizes him, in my opinion. It, like it shows, it shows to us that he isn't some like OP character with like Deus Ex Mark and like you know stuff like that back in him. He takes L's. He takes more L's than W's in like most cases, and because of that, I think to me. He make it's, he becomes like a more of, it makes it more relatable than like characters who have like plot armor or characters who don't like suffer losses like on the same scale as Kaiji does, especially at the end of the show. Kaiji becomes a pachinko addict or is developing such an addiction. Like bear in mind, literally before this, Kaiji hated the bulk and like gambling in general. Now he's addicted to it and has no money to the point where he's given money by the guy who tried to drag him back to the prison camp. And again, compared to Kakigurui where the main character is like addicted to the thrill of to the thrill and gambling, I can't see someone being like that addicted to gambling and so happy about it. I think Kaiji Kaiji's developing addiction and how he doesn't enjoy being in that position. Again, to me it like it makes him more human. I can look at Kaiji's like character development, like what he has to go through, like what he goes through, and like just you know, the, especially at the end where he becomes an addict from Pachinko. Like I can look at Kaiji in that in like that scenario, and I genuinely believe that someone out there could exist. And like compared to someone like in, to, compared to the main character in Kakaguri, again who was very into the, like the thrill of gambling. I again I don't know how you could do that, but so I don't think. Again, I, in my in my opinion, I don't think someone like that could exist. Someone who's so happy about being like on the cusp of losing everything. Kaiji just seems a lot more like realistic, a lot more down to earth. From the characters, the gambling, how it portrays like the shade of the gambling with long sharking and like the unfairity of gambling, and like the you know the punishment you get, like the prison system. Kaiji stands out. It doesn't hide anything. It wants to show like the mo like what most people would ignore when gambling from like you know what's behind all of that flashing light the the flashing cars the bright lights the big like jackpots that you get it shows everything behind there like all the sinister stuff lurking around paired that with his unique art style and the enjoyable characters both the main character the narrator the side characters I genuinely believe that is how I genuinely believe that kaiji is how gambling anime should be done. It's a gambling anime done right.